Hey, this is Joe again with another review. <coughs> for the uh, so this video I'm gonna be continuing my little trilogy of Day of Fate films. We're discussing the first one. This is the 2006 film Casino Royale. First one, Daniel Craig. This is Daniel Craig's actually first uh, film in playing James Bond. And of course, what a lot of people don't know is probably not because it's pretty much a forgotten film. But, but it's that back in the 1960s, there was an actual film version of Casino Royale starring David Niven, which is a, uh, a famous uh, version of it. Uh, but you know, it's more of a comedy, uh, as good as this thing, kind of so same and so few. And so this thing comes up, uh, and the camera picks this thing up, that's what it is. Well, there was a 1960, uh, excuse me, no, uh, back in the 1960s, there was a casino movie, Casino Royale, starring David Nevin. But there was not that an official take on James Bond, there's more of a comedy spoof, and that's what it was. And unfortunately, uh, the, the movie rights to Casino Royale wasn't sold to, uh, Kirby Broccoli and to Eon Pictures was pretty much produced pretty much what was called the official James Bond movie series. Um, so for years and years and years people would say oh how come Casino Royale hasn't gotten the official James Bond treatment? Because Strong Connery wasn't, wasn't in it. Well, it wasn't part of the, of the Strong Connery uh, canon or Roger Moore, or any of the other actors who played James Bond over the years, never got a chance to really play, put on, play in Casino Royale because of the rights to, to the novel weren't sold to United Artists. So Sony took took over as the producer of the movie studio for uh, at least the U.S. distribution rights for James Bond. For years, the United Artists, along with MGM, you know, with uh, producing James Bond films. So, after the uh, run that Pierce Brosnan had, Sony Pictures bought it and brought the rights to Casino Royale. So, let's make this an official James Bond movie. So, of course, they got together with Eon Studios in London and said, let's, let's finally make this movie to a real version of the of the can of the James Bond canon. So they decided to use Casino Royale as the first not only the first it was the first James Bond novel, but they decided to reboot the whole franchise. And so in order to do a, a, a reboot they got rid of Chris Brosnan um as playing James Bond because he, he, he played it very well. It was on the four movies that he starred in, was not that great. But, I mean, it has great action, but the plots were all that terrific, and, and I think it made fun of a lot. Because it, because it was so, the, the plots were so lousy. Because Pierce Brosnan was wanted to do it, and the powers that be didn't want him to do it. So they got rid of him, and they hired Daniel Craig to play the part. Now, Daniel Craig, he was. Pretty good. And I was saying he makes a pretty good James Bond. Uh, was he as, is he as good as Sean Connery? No. But but is he better than let's say Roger Moore? I would say yes. Because he has that he has a stone. He like he he, has, he does have a grand face. I mean the way the way his face is shaved and the way the way. He's stone faced in the way he does it. He, he hardly smiles as he's playing the character. Uh, he doesn't have the, the witty one liners. He's real deadpan, real serious about playing playing the part. And he has real chiseled looks. And of course, he's. And of course, the way he plays the part is a real serious take on the character. And of course, naturally, of course, people like me who grew up with what. You know, I grew up more with watching more movies than Sean Connery. Um, because I wasn't born yet. We're doing the Sean Connery era. 
I mean, when I saw it, never say never again, but I was like 12 years old when that movie came out. So, with him playing part, the part, I think it was very, very serious. Danny Crane playing the part, it was very, very serious, and it's it hard for me to get used to. Because the more of the James Bond that likes to come up with the really one liners and comes up with a good zinger after killing a guy. Uh, here, you don't have that. You just don't have it. Uh, like I said earlier, it's more of a serious take. You know, Casino Royale, I know it went out for five and a half minutes, not because of the movie. When Casino Royale is, a, is about, is when James Bond does get his license to kill. And he gets promoted to a, to a double O number. It means he's an agent, he, he kills somebody without thinking twice. And it's just pretty much what he does. He, he, even the being this up in the movie with M playing by Judy Dench, <coughs> who was the only character or only actress who was carrying over from the Chris Brosnan years into the into this film. And she and she managed to play M for the next two movies, the Craig movies, which they just reviewed uh, just last week. And of course, he, she was complaining over, over these overdoing it with killing guys. I said, hey, don't kill so many guys. You know, you, you, you bring the attention to yourself or bring your attention to uh, MI6. Well, how he got involved with the corn game was at first, in the beginning of the film, he was supposed to track this arms dealer who was providing arms to terrorists. And M wants him to go in there and figure out who is supplying this guy, who is supporting this guy. And of course, he had this great big, long, drawn out chase scene in the tour. The tour and, so, and he had jumps and jumping on one uh, crane to another crane. And you know, I mean, it was really a great, great, really long chase sequence. And a uh, uh, great stunt work in this thing. It's some of the best stunt work I've seen in a while in a James Bond film. And of course, what happens, of course, he goes to his embassy. He figures, okay, this guy is going to be safe in this, in this embassy. Well, Bond ran after him, killed him, and blew up the embassy. And of course, which is pretty hard, hard, hard you know, for a Bond film. He just want to get the villain and get out, save his ass, and get out of there. Well, that didn't happen. Is that he he was a complete badass at blowing up blowing up the thing and blowing up the embassy. Well, you get and M says, okay, I guess you earned your MI your double O number now. And he got the number double O seven, which of course is a thing. Everybody knows when what, what number James Bond has is, is his double uh, O number, which means he has a nice an agent with license to kill and. He gets another assignment almost right away saying, hey, you have to stop this terrorist because this airline company bring out this brand new airplane that they're testing. It's like the biggest airplane in the world and it has the most biggest seeing capacity in the world, a double-decker plane, and they believe that this plane is going to get hit. So, of course, Bond stops that, and, and in the background, the, the reason why he, the villain of course, we're playing by Matt's, I forgot the guy's last name. But he does play Hannibal Lecter in the television, in the Hannibal television series that in NBC. Yeah, he plays the villain in here, and he wanted the company, the, this plane, to be blown up so the company's stock would go down, and he would make money on it for, for the stock to go down. Well, because Bond stopped it, the, the stock went up, and of course, this guy lost millions of dollars. So he decided. And the villain supplies arms to terrorists. So they think, okay, do another way, and let's play this big high stakes poker game. And somehow, Bond gets into this poker game, and, you know, long story short, Bond, of course, wins at the end. And he wins about 100, at least $150 million in this poker game. So what happens is that he gets caught. Bond gets caught by the villain along with the girl from MI6 who was supposed to be a uh, an account with MI6 
and they get and of course they get captured and so, and of course what you don't see is of course the girl made a deal with the villain with the villains because apparently the guy who ran the poker game was working for this organization and of course we don't know what the organization the, and this organization which they went into in the next movie which I just reviewed Karma Silas and of course I, I, I believe that this organization is like Respecter that's my own belief, and even though I haven't seen the movie Spectre yet, I have not seen that yet. But you know, knowing the James Bond series like I do, it's, it's probably is Spectre. You know, you're pulling the strings. So the girl, the, the Callan, and I think it's Vesa, uh, she made a deal with the villains that hey, don't kill. With the, made a deal with the organization because this organization held the girl's boyfriend. And so you do what we want, get the money from us, otherwise we're going to kill you. And he said, look, we got you the money, just don't kill Bond. And she spared his life, even though she ended up killing herself at the end of the to spare James Bond's life. And of course, when, when, she, when he found that, when Bond found out that, he, that she took all the money, uh, she he thought that she was a traitor and then M says look she's not a traitor she was working as a double uh, double agent and she made a deal with them to spare your life that's what we found out uh, and then of course he had second thoughts because she, he actually calls her a bitch when he found found out all oh, the bitch is dead you know like ding dong the bitch is dead which I never heard Bond used the word bitch in any of the movies. Of course, back in the 60s, you know, you use that bad language, and, you know, cursing, even, even in the 60s. You know, you, they didn't cuss. Most of the Bond films I've seen, you don't really cuss. You think a couple of hells, dams. I mean, you never heard anybody say shit. I mean, you never said the F word. Uh, mention it, use in these Bond films, because usually PG or PG 13 films. Uh, so, so you hear Bond saying "what bitch." I mean, that's, that, to, me, to me, that was shocking language for a Bond movie, despite the fact that, thank you, despite the fact that it's very, very violent. These movies, uh, they never used cursing before. No, 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 they did. And of course, when Bond find out that who was blackmailing Vesta, a guy named Mister White. So he ends up getting his phone number because Vesta left her phone behind. So he traced it and found this Mr. White's number, calls him up to set up a meeting, and he, sh he shoots Mr. White. He said, who the hell are you? He said, my name is Bond, James Bond. And that's how Casino Royale ended. But my friend Casino Royale went on about like 20 minutes too long. Um, because it should have ended with, you know, Bond, you know, Bond being safe and recuperating the hospital and being, uh, acquitting, um, MI6 and maybe all the rest of the stuff they mentioned with Vesta, with the money and everything. Maybe they should have put that in in Quam Asylus and maybe make the rest of the movie going, with Bond going after the, the, uh, killers. His organization, which, which, which he did, but I feel like it should have been, you know, Quam Asana should have been better. But Casino Royale, I felt that the last 20 minutes of the film or so was, un was unnecessary for the movie, at least I think so. Uh, two of them, I never read the original novel, I never read any of the Dean's Bond novels, but, you know, it would have been nice not to have all the extra. You know, stuff it. And it would be nice to have Bond, you know, maybe having a scene where Bond quit, quits MI6 and to be with Vesta, and that's, maybe maybe that's how Casino Royale should have ended, and that having all the extra, you know, stuff in there with, with Bond saying the name is Bond, James Bond, and killing and shooting Mr. White at the, at the end. Uh, and to me, the, the, to me, that's subjective. It's subjective criticism. Of Casino Royale, but in terms of the film, the, the main plot of the film, I, think I actually I actually did kind of like the main plot. 
and you do meet Felix Lila in this movie. Uh, and once again, one of my pet peeves in Hollywood is when they change the gender or the net or the race of the characters. The Phoenix Lyon was a white actor. He was always being played, played, played by a white guy. Now all of a sudden he's it's played by a black actor. And I'm not gonna like him. He was okay in the role. He was good in the role. But when or the actor who played Phoenix Lyon and Casino, he also replayed, reprises the role in uh, Skyfall. Uh, uh, well, last guy for him, he plays the character in uh, Quan Masalas. Uh, but I I felt that they should they should keep, they should keep it as a white guy. And I, I, I'm sorry, and I'm, I'm disparaging the, the actor who played Phoenix Lyon. Uh, it's just that you should keep it the same as it is. If, if it's a white guy, always has been depicted as a white person, or a man, or a woman, whatever. They should keep it that way. Uh, but but I thought it was a, uh, good to have Felix Slayer in there. Because it's been a while. Because in the Pierce Brosnan movies, he didn't have Felix Slayer. Because he was killed off. He was pretty much uh, maimed. And nice as to kill. It was the last movie in the Pierce Brosnan that uh, Timothy Dalton did. Uh, but and getting back to uh, Casino Royale, I thought it was you know, a fine movie. I thought, I thought it was an enjoyable film. Is it the greatest, greatest Bond movie ever? No. To me, the best James Bond movie is Goldfinger. That's the best one. That's the most iconic one. That's the best one that with the best lines, the, the better plot. And, and, and I mean, I'm still a fan of, of Goldfinger more than any of the Bond, of the Bond movies. Uh, so if you want to see a great Bond movie, check out Goldfinger. But but Casino Royale, I think it's an enjoyable movie. I mean, you do have to uh, pay attention to the plot, and not so much the action. But trying get past a lot of the action, the first part of the film, and get into the main plot, which was with the poker game. Uh, if you get into that, then that's when the movie, is, to me, to me, is better. Uh, that's to me, that's the best part of the, of the film. At least for me, that's the best part of the movie. Again, when they got, when they ended up getting into the main plot of the story. Uh, so that's my review of uh, Casino Royale. Please click on the video, please read it, please subscribe to my channel, and please forward this video onto your Facebook pages. Then you can uh, check out all my videos and all on my YouTube channel, rowdyc.com. That's all O W D Y. Rowdyc.com. That's the homepage of the Rowdy Viewer. Christine Moore, check out all of his content, his TV trash videos, and plus all of his other content on his channel. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.